you want that job and you want that income, you will do whatever it takes to get that job and that income. Stop moaning and get into action, ladies, because you've got that capability. Welcome to the Marketing Boost Solutions Podcast. Join host Marco Torres, co-founder of MarketingBoost.com, along with expert guests as they deliver incredible proven solutions to your marketing challenges in each power-packed episode. Captain Marco has guided thousands of entrepreneurs, growing their sales and marketing through the use of value-add incentives. His Facebook groups are home to more than 84,000 entrepreneurs who are raking in sales with his advice. Get ready to be blown away with game-changing lessons for your business. Folks, welcome to another episode of the Marketing Boost Solutions Podcast. Today, we're bringing you a very special guest that is close to my heart, as she is a world-renowned sailor with over 20,000 miles of sailing over the last uh, year or so. Uh, Dawn Bates is a true international best-selling author of more books than she can keep count of on five continents. She specializes in developing global leaders into real authorities who wish to give a voice to the voiceless while working with them and to create a brand expansion strategies through activism and authorship. She holds profound, profound truths in social justice, human rights, underpin everything she does. At the core of her soul is a passion for being of service to humanity, giving hope, courage, and confidence for others to stand in the truth and live a life of conviction. She writes for magazines, sails around the world on yachts, and Digital Nomad is a currently, currently working towards her PhD and by the way, she's single. Say hello, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> to Miss Dawn Bates. Hello, Dawn. Hello, Marco. <laughs> what an introduction. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you for joining us on the show. Uh, let me see if I can get this set up as gallery view, or we're both on the screen. Let me, I got some. There we go. So, Dawn, tell us about you know, a little bit more about your sailing before we turn the recording on. We were uh, talking about your recent voyages, 20,000 odd miles around the globe. Yeah, um, I'm not give us a, finished yet. <laughs> give us a little bit of that in your next adventure. I understand you're heading to North America and going to be sailing up uh, around here somewhere. So, yeah. Well, you're currently um, coming to us from Ireland, correct? Yeah, I'm currently in Ireland. We're off sailing around the Aran Islands tomorrow. Um, and uh, so that'll be quite cool, really. A uh, full day of sailing, nice. Um, and then I'll be uh, flying to you into North America. Not really much into the flying. I don't mind it, but I can't be doing with the airports and all that security and control. And ugh. Um, <laughs> I like to just rock up at the marina. Let's go. Let's just go sailing. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, no. So I, I prefer. I am a monohull girl, as we were just discussing, and. Um, I love that feeling of just being alive. You know, when I was down in the rolling 50s, down in the Southern Atlantic, there was just, yeah, okay. So four hours of being on watch, clothes are wet. You do four hours sleep, you get back up, you put your wet clothes on again, and then you go back up on deck. And then you just feel alive. Um, yeah. Wow. It's great. I love it. <laughs> no, I, I have a, a similar passion. I enjoy the same sailing, mostly coastal sailing in my case around the around Florida oh, and, I'm a and what have you. Fan. I haven't been a, a I haven't truly been a deep blue sailor just yet. So that's part of my uh, future plans here. <laughs> well, you know, we I'm going to be doing the Pacific and the Indian. So you know, if you're available and you want to come sailing, I will be looking for crew. So oh, wow. okay, that might be. I might have to take you up on that. <laughs> <laughs> so let's talk about your your career, your uh, your project. You know, your career and how you mm. helped others write books, and now you've written so many books. Tell us a little bit about your process in writing the books you've written, and how you and why you recommend others write books okay well i i'm what i call an accidental author um in the sense that i got so annoyed answering the same questions to so many people i was like i'm just gonna go write a book and then you've got all the answers and i can just say go read my book 
Um, and so I did that. That was my first book. And that was all about, you know, when it was like growing up in quite a racist atheist area and what it was like being married to an Arab and, you know, and how this, that my career progression, I set up my first business when I was 21, my second when I was 24, uh, uh, you know, and just how it just went completely crazy working with clients all around the world. My second book was shortly after I'd moved back to England after living out in Egypt following the Egyptian uprising. And I was so annoyed because I was supposed to be going on BBC uh, World Service the next day. Um, and so I was listening to the radio about some of the subjects being discussed. And I was like, that's not that's not what happened. I'm going to write another book. <laughs> and then it's just been um, from there on in. Um, and... So if there's something that's going on in the world that I just really want to, um, you know, that I'm passionate about and giving people a voice and I hate bullies. Oh, there's my website. Um, and <laughs> there's my eyes. If you're watching us, if you're watching us on YouTube, if you're watching us on YouTube or Rumble, uh, we're looking at donbates.com. This is where you can find more about Don. And yeah. while she's chatting here, I thought I'd pull up her her screen and show you some of the you know the books that she's written mm. uh so it's all about uh all about don here today go ahead let me yeah. not let me not go back to the full screen so we're not uh distracting you with your own image <laughs> yeah well it's just really weird because on my website i every photo that's I, that's on there is from a different part of the world i'm like oh i was in colombia at that point oh, i was in costa rica i was in nicaragua i was in brazil i was in australia i was in the middle of the atlantic and I can pinpoint everywhere I was on around the world just by looking at my website. So that's pretty cool. Uh, and this is the thing when you're when you are an activist, I've always been an activist, even from a very young age. Even my eldest son was on an anti-war march at four days, uh, four days old. We got out of hospital and I was like, right, come on, there's a march. Let's go. And my ex-husband was like, what? You've just not even been home yet. I'm like, I don't care. We can get a cup of tea on the way um and so yeah, we were all on an anti-war march uh, an hour after i checked out of hospital um uh, i really don't like bullies i hate government corruption i hate the lies that we're told um and you know this unconscious thinking that people have and that where it's and i often refer to a lot of people as lemmings just jumping off the cliff um and um, my mother had this phrase of like if someone says to you jump and you ask how high you really are not thinking um well she's paraphrasing that obviously um but I just I have such a passion for people living their best life and one of the things I've realized over the years is when we get to a certain level of success in life yeah we can write a book on you know you know how to do no offense to Russell Brunson we can do a book on how to do a click funnel or we can write a book on marketing or we can write a book on branding or we can write a book on you know accounting but if you want to be networking with people at the next next level if you're writing a book that's close to your heart and there's a cause you can actually make a difference and then you find the other entrepreneurs and change makers that are interested in that cause they're going to read your book and they're actually going to go actually this person stands for something this person is actually got the courage to actually put their head above the parapet stop hiding behind their brand and they're actually willing to do something about it and raise awareness and so you're going to attract other like-minded successful entrepreneurs or people within um, that really want to change government or policy or the law um, I mean, at the moment, we're seeing the movie The Sound of Freedom from an FBI agent. And that's been, you know, they've been trying, uh, the powers that be have been trying to stop that being uh, going out for the last five, six years. And part of me is like, I was saying to my oldest son, I, having been in the Amazon, I'm writing a book about parenting. Um, and in that is going to be a chapter about what it was like for me watching these young girls being trafficked in the Amazon because part of the, the work that I do as I travel around the world, it's not just all, you know, sitting on deck and, you know, reading a book and sunbathing. It is actually researching cultures, uh, social injustices and human rights violations and raising awareness because with freedom comes responsibility. And it's all well and good me having the freedom and the, the, the courage to go and travel and do all this sailing. But if I'm not raising awareness of the impact we're all having on each other's cultures and countries and politics and life, then I really, um, that doesn't sit well with me. Um, and um, so 
so I'm there and I'm in uh, this no man's land between Peru, Colombia and Brazil. And I'm watching these young girls and these women being trafficked. Um, and it, but the problem I had was if I'd have gone up and I'd have done something about it, then either I would have been joining them, I'd have ended up with a bullet in my head. Um, and it's like, how do we as successful entrepreneurs and thought leaders, as I've been referred to, and I really don't like that phrase, um, you know, how do we make a difference? How do we write about this? How do we get the people in our networks to know about this? Because, and one of the ways we do that is by writing a book. And we all know that we all speak in a very different way. We all have, uh, I mean, I'm, I'm quite blunt. <laughs> I know, I know that I'm very, you know, very forthright. I don't suffer fools gladly when I write a book and it is about human rights or social justice. I write it so that my dad would love it. And he only reads shit fishing magazines. Um, and human rights does not belong to the academics and by politicians. It belongs to everybody. So if I can write a book where it sounds like I'm sat there with friends having a cup of tea and putting the world to rights, it's more likely that more people are going to read it. People are also quite nosy, Marcus. So, you know, if we write a book about our life, then people want to know what's going on in our life. Um, and so there are many different ways in which business leaders can do it. And also when business leaders write these books about a cause that's really important to them, they actually become more human. Um, and they're actually going to um, become more aware of the, um, the fact that people want to relate to them. People are going to then connect with them even more. Um, and I've just noted my camera has just, frozen up there a little bit yeah so but you know let me ask you this question it sounds like some of that writing and i've not had the opportunity to read your books love me listen to your podcasts but uh sounds like that risks in today's world putting yourself on one side or the other which you know you risk um alienating 50 percent of the community with taking a stance like freedom like the freedom uh, movie uh, you're referring to and uh, how some of, you know, the main, mainstream media is blocking it and trying to uh, dis, uh, you know, uh, frame it as something that's mm -hmm. all right wing QAnon and, and so on. What would, you say, <laughs> what would you say to that? Well, if they're trying to block you, there's a reason why they're trying to block you. Um, if they're trying to stop you, it's probably because you are closer to the truth than they actually want you to. Because the thing is, it's like when we all know that we want to control something that we're afraid of. Um, and if we're trying to, so for example, one of the reasons what we're seeing now, several years after the COVID pandemic, is the fact that you've got people um, and the science, all the people that were conspiracy theorists that were saying, no, this is not a very good I used to tried an untested vaccine. It's this, that, and the other. Um, and now we're seeing a lot of people that are incredibly sick um, and um, they're dying from a lot of the different vaccines that were put out there. And you're also seeing a lot of insurance companies that are actually not um, paying out on people's health claims because they had a tried and untested vaccine. Um, and in the, I used to sell insurance and I've said to my parents, make sure that when you do this, that you know your insurance will pay out because they say if you're going to take medical trials you're not supposed to be they won't pay out on your insurance and that's what's actually happening but if people are worried about putting their head up above the parapet do they actually stand for anything are they people pleasing because if you are more worried about what other people think of you than what you think of yourself and you're more worried about um, people not being your friend then you're actually with the wrong friends you're with the wrong people because the people that are your people will actually find you and it can be lonely it really can um i have people fall away all the time and i'm just like well i'd rather stand for who i am and back myself than have the wrong people in my crowd and we always say you know can um we always say that environment is everything so it's uh you know, I don't want yes people around me. I don't want people that are just going to. Uh, no, jump. I get it. I, I totally get it. I've yet I have been in myself caution or cautioned about really sharing my true beliefs in today's world. I mean, chick, you get 
I, get, I make a living from Facebook and they've banned me multiple times for sure. <laughs> yeah, I, mean, I spent you know? more time in Facebook. <laughs> I spent more time in Facebook jail than I did out of it. And I just got to the point where I was like, knowing that they were selling our photos um, to some very dark places that I was like, yeah, I'm done with Zuckerberg. Um, yeah. I, so I deleted, I deleted over 20,000 followers um, on Instagram and Facebook. Uh, I, I don't know how many short stories were on there. Um, I just deleted the lot. I was like, I'm done. I am so done. Well, it's, you're um, you're, you're he even getting closer to my heart at every, with every word you say. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just so, think, you know, I've got one life and I face my mortality. I've been overboard when sailing um, and uh, lost my two front teeth. So I'm a proper pirate now. And at the end of the day, I'm not going to be somebody else. Um, oh, I just nearly swore. <laughs> right, right. Proper sailor girl here now. I, I just don't see why I should just compromise who I am as a person just to satisfy somebody else. Why would I do that? No, nope, you can't. Yeah, and, and that's strong to, to take that position and... Uh, especially in today's say, world, Marco, I own my but own it creates reason. your followers. People either love you or hate you, and then that can be a good thing too. So you might as well Absolutely. get, get mm -hmm. yeah, have the the ones you want to start to follow you, the ones that you do believe, you know, uh, believe in your causes and what have you, and and maybe alienate some of the others, but maybe not. They'll you know, they'll just give they'll have a certain level of respect regardless. So uh, well, I mean, if we look at what alienation really is, it's the people that are offended by what we're saying, um, and especially when people like myself can back it up, when people go, have you got a link? It's like, well, I've got 25 years worth of links. Which one would you like? There are books that go with that. 25 years of study have got me where I am. And because I read things that challenge me, um, I get to figure out, okay, well, that's why I'm offended by this, or this is why this is triggering me. Okay, that's because I didn't have that knowledge. Okay, I didn't have that missing piece of the puzzle. Or because I'm so in my ego and the only way we can really drop out of our ego and actually become um, the actual leaders and more successful um, is actually by being confronted on who we are. But we tell, only us grow more, as tell, tell us more about your coach, writing, your authoring, coaching service. And, you know, what are some of the what would be some of the advice you'd give to somebody who's considering writing a book i mean do you one is that like you say you i, I think you don't like these pamphlets ebooks mm. these lead magnets that we people <laughs> call books um what from from what i've heard you really you know critiquing those and of course and of course that's the easiest thing to go right you know you can use chat gpt and spit out a book and you know uh and call it your own and you know whatever um uh, which is <laughs> <laughs> I have not put out any kind of a book or pamphlet or anything because I, I don't believe in that either. And I haven't had the, I haven't had the dedication to put the time to really put something together that means something. Mm. But um, so how do we, you know, where do you guide somebody who wants to make a difference, who wants to uh, have a message and maybe at the same time, use it as a lead magnet, as a mm. networking opportunity of, you know, of creating authority, et cetera. Well, I mean, I, I look at it this way, Marco, and I think that you'll like this um, analogy. It's um, why be a puddle when you can be an ocean? Um, and, um, you know, the, the thing is, it's like people bang out these vanilla regurgitated, uh, they call them short books, but they're not. They're trying to replicate who moved my cheese and you can't do that. Um, not very well anyway. And and again, it's like if you are just chucking out ebook after ebook and you're just putting it upon uh amazon with a self-created um canva chaos cover um it, it's not very deep and again like i don't what does this actually say about you um what does this say about your message and if you're just cutting corners and you know does this show in your coaching and I always go through that. Why do you want to write this book? Why is are you doing it because you're being told you should do it? Are you doing it because that's what every other entrepreneur is doing or business leader is doing it? Are you doing it because you want to do it or because you feel you have to do it to fit in with everybody? Um, 
and if you're doing it because you need to fit in with everybody then you don't stand for yourself you're not you know you've got to do it some people do podcasts uh, my podcast that I do, yes, they, they've got some really great, um, well, they're all really great conversations, um, but they're more, um, I'm using them as learning material in my author academy. Um, and I, so I know that obviously having been a teacher that people learn in all these different ways. So are you writing a book because you think you have to? Um, some people prefer to do videos. I don't do many videos. Um, and it is about finding your medium. If you do want to check out a, a little pamphlet, and it's like my the, the workbooks that are in my author academy, they are 35 pages worth of deep journaling, action taking. Uh, they're not these uh, 12 pages with a quarter page picture of the person who created it with lots of lines on it and lots of empty spaces. You've got work to do. When you do any of my courses, um then you are actually going to go very deep you are going to get confronted um and um, you are going to get called forward and there are action plans in there that you can follow and the seven week author course is my signature program and we're um, working now on the one million authors campaign um and where you it's all the 25 years worth of entrepreneurship that I've been doing. There's life coaching in there. There's um, author coaching. And when I talk about author coaching, I'm not talking about a writing coach or a book coach. I'm actually talking about what is your book that's worthy of your life. If you just write this one book, what lifestyle do you want with that? What lifestyle are you creating? Um, with me, I'm an author that sails around the world researching human rights and social justice and culture. And I am an author first before I'm a business consultant now. I used to do business. I mean, I've always done business since I was 19. Um, and a lot of people that we're seeing in business now, they're a business consultant first, then they're a speaker, and then they're an author so they can sell the book from the back of the room. Whereas I am the author first, who's becoming the speaker in the North American circuit. Um, I've always been on stages, running workshops, whether it's you know 2,000 people, 20,000 people asking them for money for a fundraising course, or whether I'm delivering uh, mic dropping speeches to you know the police force and the government and you know the um, universities on cultural diversity, real cultural diversity, lived cultural diversity not these people that study it they have no diversity in their life at all um, and then they go and talk about diversity and I'm talking about lived diversity um, you, know, my you have all this background 25 years in business but you look yeah. 35 years old so how did that happen you must be <laughs> good living <laughs> <laughs> always giggling and wiggling um, and um, now I eat well I don't drink I don't smoke um, I'm 45. I had my children, my first child when I was uh, 25. And I always knew that I wanted two boys four years apart. Um, and so I worked backwards. It's like, okay, what do I want to achieve? And how do I get that done? Um, I knew having studied, I always knew I wanted to be a mum. So I studied child development. You know, it's like, I always knew I'd have my own business. How do I do that? Get it done. I want to sell one million. Uh, I want to support as many authors and impact as many lives as possible. OK, let me create the courses to be able to support the authors, because I know that a lot of people who write books and choose to use books, they have no business experience. Um, and this is why when I'm coaching my clients, I am a geek. I'm working with an incredible gentleman at the moment. We're working with several um we've just wrapped up the first draft of his manuscript it's a historical fiction book but it's activism through historical fiction it's putting the history out there of one of the characters in for this big huge period of time and i can't say too much because i signed an nda um and so i'm researching with him um and it's like why does he want to do it and when you get down to the core of his story it's so telling why he chose this one, because it's all about the underdog. It's all about the people who actually made the people, um, the person that's in the spotlight. And how many of us know that person who has actually helped build lots of different people? Um, and that person has actually just 
ignored the person who built them and actually not even recognize them. Now, what you're showing at the moment, um, the sacral series, they are nine true stories of people who went through different versions of abuse. Um, and you'll see there that um, Layla, she um, used art therapy as healing modality. Pandora used free diving as a way to heal from her trauma. Alpha used social justice. Faith, the next book in that series, is somebody who actually used um, travel and going out to use social uh, community work. So he's actually, I mean, the book, the manuscript is nearly finished and he's actually gone out into the rural areas and faith is called Walking Away from Religion to Save Your Soul. Um, and that's a series of three, um, it was nicknamed the Trinity of Trilogies. Now, this relentless rebel duology, Friday Bridge was my very first book. Jerry needs to actually update that cover. Um, we'll need to get him on for that. Um, and that talks about what it was like when I converted to Islam before I actually met a Muslim. And then Wallahi, um, and what it was like actually living as a Muslim for uh, the 20 years that I, whilst being a raver um, and being a successful businesswoman. And people like, well, how does that all fit together? And um, I made a TV documentary, Channel 4, that's all in there. And um, and then Wallahi is about what it was like when I lived out in Egypt uh, during the uprising. And I remember my mum, actually, she phoned me up. She goes, what are you doing in Tahrir? You're all over the telly. And I was like, well, mum, if I want my human rights recognised, I've got to help everybody else's get theirs recognised. But it's got nothing to do with you. I was like, mum, my children are Egyptian Palestinian. This has got everything to do with me. I'm living in Egypt. Um, wow. Yeah. Um, and then you've got the Scotland saga. This was when I was arrested um, in Scotland for taking my two children on a wild camping trip. And I left the boys alone for maybe five, 10 minutes. Uh, my eldest was legally old enough for me to pay him to look after my, the youngest one. Um, and they, the, the moment I started speaking Arabic to my children, the handcuffs went on. And I was like, you're not allowed to do this. <laughs> I know the law, I was a police assessor. And my thinking was, well, if they're able to do this to me and I have to fight the law for three years uh, to the tune of £50,000 worth of legal fees, because I did a lot of the study of the law myself, I'd just become a single mum. And one of the things I really dislike, I know I'm going, I'm really having one uh, on one at the moment, is mummy martyrdom. These single mums that say, oh, I can't do that, I'm a single mum. That is the very reason you should be doing everything that you should be doing. Just because you've become a single mum does not now mean to say that you can become a victim. You actually have to rise. You have to own your ovaries, ladies, and you have to show your kids exactly what it means to be a woman and just how powerful as women we are. Um, and lightning strikes twice is the, the second uh, part of that. And then, as you'll see here, you've got the menopause and more. You've got Annie. She's an incredible woman. Um, she asked me to write her book with her, um, help her write her autobiography. I was like, no, I'm not going to do an autobiography with you. You, The woman of her standing, um, she was at the very top of Australian corporate culture. Um, and so I said, do you need a biography? So I wrote the biography about her. She then um, has said that because of what I've written and how I've written about her, she's actually been able to accelerate her leadership on a global stage. And now she's all over the place. I didn't know much about the menopause um, and what we did know was written by men or women who were trying to compete with men. And so the books that the women wrote were all uh, pushing big pharma or they were so clinical, they were boring um, and they were probably drier than a woman in menopause. But I was like, I'm not I'm not interested in that book. I want a book that's going to make me laugh, that's going to give me alternatives to being in menopause. What about a verdict? What about um, mental health? What about exercise and how the chemicals that are in our body, how we remove those? How do we menopause? And why is it the way, why is it we've been told that we're not allowed to talk about what goes, what women go through just because it makes men uncomfortable? Why should we? Some of the things that my, my doctor friends talk about at dinner make me uncomfortable, but they still talk about it. Um, you know, why shouldn't we? Like, men have to live with menopause just as much as women do. Absolutely. Men need to know about menopause. Um, <laughs> and then, you know, we're coming on to the Mermaid's Guide series. This is a series of nine books which will be submitted for my PhD. And I'm tackling 
uh, what it is like to be a digital nomad, a proper one. None of these Insta nomads that we're seeing that, you know, they go on these long holidays for a year, two years, five years and take lots of pictures with the big angel women outside the angel pictures outside of bars and stick them on Instagram. And they've got, you know, the safety net of going home. If you're a nomad, you sell everything, you up sticks and you go. You've got nothing. It's like you're hauling anchor on your life. Um, and in there, you'll be reading books on long distance parenting, culture, on sailors, whether you're a boat owner or whether you're a sailor. There is a distinction, as we both know there, Marco. Um, mm. And then there'll be one on women and shamanism and witchcraft. There'll be one on uh, food feminism and flags. Um, a whole range of books, but they're all written from an anthropological point of view and um, looking at human rights around the world and then the trilogy of identity that's coming. And then I've got another series of books on proper erotica uh, rather than the the tacky stuff that we're seeing out there at the moment. And again, these are all things I stand for. And um, it's if we don't stand for anything, we stand for nothing. We stand for nothing, yeah. And these are cliches, but people throw them around like confetti. But if you really truly do want to make a difference in the world, one of the best ways of doing that is by selling a book that actually means something. Hmm. Wow. So. And I'll take a breath. <laughs> yeah. You, as you say, you drop the mic on the stage and just you know, drop some, some deep inspiration. I'll be um, dropping a bit more on Acer. This is a brand new laptop and the camera's gone and I'm ever so sorry to everybody there, but I'm great that my, my website's getting lots of exposure. Thank you. <laughs> you're very welcome. You're welcome. And we're looking at, yeah, your books. And one of the things you mentioned, we'll, we'll come back to, uh, to you in just a moment. So let me take a commercial break from our sponsor and we'll be right back. It's time to wow, surprise, and impress your clients with the most powerful customer draw card available anywhere. The Marketing Boost Solution Show is brought to you by Marketing Boost, where you can get valuable travel and restaurant incentives to drive your leads from prospects to paying customers. Now you can offer complimentary hotel stays in over 130 destinations worldwide. Go to marketingboostsolutions.com and try it for free right now. Welcome back to the Marketing Boost Solutions podcast. We're here with Don Bates having a deep conversation about inspiration, about writing, you know, creating your legacy, writing a real book, how to do it, uh, following her, Don Bates International, her series of books, her author academy, and uh, really enjoying this conversation. You are someone I would love to meet in person one day. Heck, you invited me to go sailing with you on your next journey. I may have to consider that. <laughs> See if I can find the time to be one of your crew members. So let's talk about getting published. How do we go about getting published as you show on your on your website here as well? Well, I mean, there are many ways. I mean, you can wait for permission and approval from the big four. Um, or you can just say, well, actually, I know I'm good enough. And I know what I've written is great. I'm going to do it myself. And there are many ways you can do that. You can either work with somebody like me, um, and I tend to attract a lot of entrepreneurs more than um, uh, because as a boutique publisher, I actually um, do a lot of the stuff for people. So I'll be the developmental editor. I will helping them do a lot of the research. Um, I will make sure that all the typesetting, all the editing, um, all of the uh, proofreading, that's all done, cover art, the, we'll sort out all the metadata. So you, if you work with a boutique publisher like myself, you are absolutely, all you focus on is actually writing the manuscript. You hand it to me and my, me and my team, we do the rest. If, however, you wanted just to do it all yourself um, and you don't want to invest in your own book, um, getting published uh, with somebody who like me offers a service, then you can do it all by yourself. You can go on your KDP, you can go on Ingram, you can go on uh, draft to digital and you can upload your manuscript that way. But the thing is, and as you just uh, clicked over there, there's a manuscript assessment. One of the, all of these people have invested in themselves. Um, and, um, you know, we we publish their book. And but one of the things I do not do is actually offer a sales and distribution system because I want these people to step up and actually invest them in themselves. 
So if they really want to see their book successful, then they will actually step up and they will do the work to do it. Um, and uh, so there are lots of different things that we do. We uh, the manuscript assessment. I having travelled extensively and I speak five languages, um, sometimes in the same sentence. Um, I was, was going to ask you that earlier <laughs> because I noticed the accents when you mentioned Brazil and when you mentioned uh, Colombia, Nicaragua. Oh, yeah. I'm, like, yeah. I'm like, okay, this woman speaks multiple languages as well. Yeah, so what, I do. Are those, what are those five languages? Uh, Arabic, Portuguese, uh, Spanish, uh, Italiano. But my Italian is uh, is not as good as it was. Um, I can still order my favorite food and an espresso uh and um you know i can get around in italy but again once i'm back in italy or i'm with italians give me 20 24 48 hours and i'm back there i'm right I'm back yeah if you absolutely if you lose it i mean uh, the old saying you don't use it you lose it so absolutely it's like your stomach muscles and it's like your brain if you don't use them you know you are going to lose them and um but again, and then, you know, there are people that, um, so we have a whole team dedicated to those who are really successful that want to just focus on writing it and selling it when they're on the stage or when they're going out to networks or whether they're doing it in bulk through the independent bookstores. I've just had, when people do work with me, um, we do get a lot of the books, like several of my authors, like Jake's books, they're all in the top six universities in Britain um, and in the US, so that they're actually now becoming reference material. Um, and again, it's like, know what you're good at and delegate the rest. Mm -hmm. So you can either, um, like I said, use a beauty publisher that will actually then um, publish everything. Crystal, she came to me with a manuscript which she had spoken which then went into tech. So I had to make sense of that. Then um, I re helped her develop that manuscript, uh, not just for public speaking on stages, but for podcasts, core arguments for students, for um, sales presentations. So anyone that wanted to do any kind of public speaking, um, we I doubled the, the word count for her manuscript. We designed the artwork for it. She came to us with her branding colors or what kind of colors she wanted with the photos. We created that. So, um, Lani, um, Standing in Strength, that's a collection, that's an anthology. Um, that is nine women who share their stories of using sport to actually push through those mental barriers. And um, the breakdown to wake up the 16 authors in there. Um, I don't normally do more than 10 authors. And the reason I don't do more than 10 authors is because most platforms, you can only have up to 10 authors listed. Um, and plus, if you're doing more than 10 authors, you don't get the meat, you don't get the guts of the story. Um, so when I see people doing, you know, 16, 20, 30 people putting their stories into a book, I'm like, eh, I'm not reading it. No, I'm not interested. I want a proper story. I want the meat and the potatoes. Mm -hmm. um, and then you've got Nath. Cannot wait for book three. So if Nath is listening, hurry up and get that third manuscript written. Um, incredible story. This is talking about men's mental health and brotherhood using fiction. Um, just incredible what he's done with that story. Um, mm. It's about the pit rats um, and their, they were slaves and then they became gladiators. And it was just the journey of men and the brotherhood and the, the friendship unfolding. Carmel's story is about how she um, grew up in Australia. She always felt a little bit um, outside of things. Um, and then she lived in Papua New Guinea and had been married, divorced, married, divorced. But then she started getting all of these messages and what was all this about, you know, and how she, why was all this language there and like all these, what we call downloads. So she wrote her story. She's a Pilates teacher in Australia. Really, really lovely woman. Um, and Corey's story is absolutely harrowing. Um, and um, yeah, that's about, you know, family life in Arizona. Um, it is really that was a very hard book to read that that in, that involves child abuse um, um, and um, some really shocking stuff but um, and book two is um, taking its time to be written um, 
but you know well you can probably tell that that book really has left its mark on me mm. um and this is the thing when you're writing a book that actually stands for something to address something you mentioned earlier a lot of the big four publishers they will not publish the books that need to be written they want you to water down the message they want you to um, placate people a little bit more um and when you publish with the big four you probably only get 10 percent of your royalties very unlikely will you get much in sense of merchandising sales um whereas if you publish with someone like myself it's like what business can we create where does this book fit into your current business plan what is it that you are doing um now a lot of these people they just wanted to publish their book um and just get their story out there um and they're working on the business model that was coming from behind some of them have realized that having shared their story they're just not ready to go any further and this is something that these are the books i've published some of the books that i've worked on i can't actually promote the fact that i've worked on them um for one reason or another and um but you, you know, actually you and your team to help write these books or other than I, I've helped helping edit, them. edit the manufacture, I mean, the, the manuscripts and so forth. I do all of the, um, like, so when they're working on the manuscript, I will be going through um, developing the story, getting it deeper. Then what we do is we then send it over to the editor or the proofreader, because sometimes they've already got their editor that they want, like, for example, Al, he's got a team of line editors and developmental, uh, sorry, copy editors. And then the, once I get the manuscript back, it will go to my proofreaders, then to my typesetters, um, our, my graphic designers. They will be um, they will design these cover art. Um, and so we just provide the client with everything that they, they want to use. Um, and what do you what do you look for in a client? What do what is kind of the qualifications for you to decide to help somebody? Um, it's changed, obviously, because the more I publish and the more I work with people, the more I learn, the more I'm like, yeah, okay, I don't want to work with that. Um, so they they have to be ready to invest. They have to be willing, not just, I'm not just talking money, but they have to be ready to invest their time and go deep. They have to be willing to actually talk about something and be when they actually get to the other side of the manuscript, they have to stand by that book. They have to be willing to do the marketing and do the sales for their own book, um, rather than just collecting the title of author, which is what um, a lot of people do. They actually take the time um, they, to write this book and then they go, right, I've got the title of author now. I don't need to do anything else because everything's just gonna happen. It's like, no, if you're gonna write a book, it's like any product that we create. If we're not selling that product, what was the point of promote, creating it in the first place? you've got to be willing to sell it. So that's now fundamental. Um, and people that do have business acumen, um, I work with on a one-to-one. -one. Um, if they want to grow their business or if they haven't got business experience, sorry, then I do tend to uh, point them in the direction of the seven week author course. Um, I'm seeing this blog for the first time in a long time. Um, we're playing around with it at the moment and some of the images are changing and like some of the blogs are being taken down and which ones are there and which one we're pulling away and um, yeah I got banned from LinkedIn <laughs> <laughs> because I was talking about successful single women and how one of the things that we get on LinkedIn and a lot of the social media platforms is oh you're beautiful now okay I'm here to do business my appearance has got nothing to do with it, uh, being in business um and one of my posts was um i mentioned i was talking about this and i got banned because i said you're just promoting the fact that you're single and you want a date i'm like no i'm not like why why would it do that i'm on linkedin to do business my whether i'm in a relationship or not is it actually irrelevant uh for that um having a conversation relating to people such as we're doing now yeah i am single but that doesn't define me that does not um you know, uh, mm -hmm. I'm not, I'm not going to do. And there was one chap who only wanted to do business with me because he thought he could get in my knickers. I'm like, no, that's not going to happen. 
<laughs> I don't care how much money you've got in the bank account. I don't care how much money you talk about. You have got to, there's a very long list of non-negotiables, Marcus. <laughs> <laughs> I can only imagine. <laughs> You've so got then you've got, so then you've got your podcast as I well. Do, and, yeah. um, so you'll be on there. This will be on there. This conversation will be on there as well. Um, awesome. Yeah. It, there's a lot going on. We're just about to launch series two and that should, series two should be up there any day now. Um, which, so we've changed the cover art slightly for that podcast image. Um, yeah, there's, you've got to have a big vision and this is one of the things i do with my clients it's like you're writing the book where does it fit into your current business where does it fit into your future business how is this working for your vision what is it you want to do how is it you want to impact people i want the nobel prize for literature that's my goal <laughs> wow. not, a, not a small goal um, <laughs> why have small goals like right right why not I think don't, yeah, just I want that Nobel Prize for literature. And you can only get that if you make a substantial contribution to humanity. That's, again, why I write these books. Debbie, her book, Alive to Thrive, she's got all those uh, fabulous ladies from around the world talking about why they attempted suicide. Um, and so now you've got these ladies all working together, sharing their story, you know, whether it's postpartum depression, whether it's because one of them was sex trafficked, one of them was an underachiever in the eyes of her parents. One of them was she got mixed up with the wrong crowd and so she ended up in drugs and then there was the social, uh, a civil war. And so all of these different things. So you've got these ladies all going out to their networks to actually bring awareness to the other ladies um, in there. And we're actually doing one on male uh, suicide with a charity that I have been mentoring somebody and setting up called Tough to Talk. The book is called Man Up um, because we always say, don't leave a man behind. There's a man down. And I really don't like the negative connotations of man up. And I think, you know, men should be celebrated. Men are, uh, you know, women can't be the fabulous uh, beings that we are without men and vice versa. And I just think there's far too much emasculation going on by a lot of these angry women that call themselves feminists, but they're not really feminists. I noticed that you mentioned and somewhere I read that you were a kind of anti-feminist or anti-women right women's rights. What do you mean by uh, that? <laughs> well, I got told I was anti-women's rights because I said that a lot of the women that choose to wear the niqab and the hijab actually choose to wear it. It's only the Western idea that these women are oppressed. And a lot of the time it's actually the women who run who wear the trousers in those households, trust me. Yes, there are a lot of women who don't want to wear it and their culture or the way they live prevents them from taking it off. But a lot of the women choose to wear it. Um, and it's not by force. I chose to wear it and then I chose to remove it and then I chose to walk away from organized religion completely. Um, and so because I was saying that, I got told I was anti-women's rights. But one of the things that I'm not is I'm not for these angry women emasculating men telling men that they um you know they're taking all our jobs and all the money and it's like no if you want that job and you want that income you will do whatever it takes to get that job and that income even if it means walking away from your six seven figure job in a big corporate and starting your own company to go and get it stop moaning stop whinging own your ovaries and get into action ladies because you know you've got that capability if we can grow if we can conceive and grow a child within us and push that baby out and keep that baby alive on breast milk alone we can do anything but women love this sob story that it's the men that are taking our jobs it's the men that are stopping us no they're not well, men just today, have a very different in, way in, of working absolutely and in today's world we're being taught that almost everybody's a victim so it's yeah, like, you know, I women, you know, single moms, you talked about that, you know, the victimhood and then the Latino victimhood, the black mm. victimhood, you know, we're all, we all can, we, we can all claim a victimhood on something and use that as an excuse or an anchor when uh, you've got to get out from behind those excuses and make something happen. Absolutely. Um, I can't, I haven't got time for victims. I'm sorry. 
Yeah. I'm not sorry, actually. <laughs> I'm not. Right. Don, you said you had a special offer for our listeners, uh, something around getting two books or three books for the pr price of two, or how do we do yeah. that? Yeah. So if people want, if they go to the website and there are any of my books on there that they fancy having a read, if they send me an email or they connect with me on LinkedIn, send me the ones that they want and with their contact details, then I can send them out uh, the books and I'll put a special mention in each of the books because I can personalize the books. You see, I don't have to be in person to sign it. I can actually put an extra additional page in the book printed um uh, as a thank you um and uh, yeah they just need to contact me and then i'll get that sorted out for them so you use sort of a print on demand uh type yeah. service and, it's uh, my um it's my environmental policy honestly my laptop's made of post-consumer recyclable um i am yeah everything is recyclable um or mate, like I've just bought a new raincoat for going sailing yesterday because I can't find my raincoat for anything. But love, I'm like, which country did I have that in last? Where did I last <laughs> wear that? 43 countries. And I'm just like, hmm, which one? <laughs> Where did I lose that? <laughs> <laughs> there are bits of dawn all around the world. Um, so, but that's made from all recycled material. So I'm not going to... Um, print off loads and loads of books and actually take up distribution space, which is something that I cover in the seven week author course. How are you impacting the environment by what you're doing, by what you're buying? You say you you stand for this, but are you standing for it in every area of your life? You say you want to do this, but are you doing it in every area of your life? Because how you do one thing is how you do everything. Huh. Another mic drop, boom. <laughs> how you do one thing is how you do everything wow folks marketing moves members if you're listening don't forget you need to automate your business if you're not in automation if you're not organizing with this in a proper crm how to communicate mm -hmm. with your clients then you are behind the eight ball in today's world there's never been a better time to be an entrepreneur uh, I think there's so much technology available for everybody out there. Check out automationbooster.com. And of course, the Marketing Boost incentives at marketingboost.com. We've been here having another fabulous conversation with Don Bates. You can find her more about her at donbates.com and see the books she's written or helped write at donbates.com forward slash readers. She's got a special offer. Contact her to get three books for the price of two. And as she went through all of this on this show, it they wow, I want to sign up and get some of these books and start reading. So, folks, uh, thanks again for why. If you like the content of this show, don't forget to subscribe, share, and like. Like the page, share it, and subscribe to either the podcast or the YouTube channel. We really appreciate it. Don, do you have any final last words that you would uh Another mic drop that you'd like to share with our audience. Oh, I don't know if this is another mic drop, but yeah, I just, I mean, I just want people to be happy being themselves, Marco. And the only way we can do that is when we stop listening to others and actually start truly listening to who we are. You know, I, I do say to people, turn down the sound of everybody else and turn up the volume of your own soul. Um, yeah. Speaking of volume, one of the questions I often ask my guests is, you know, in part of uh, the opportunity for folks to like and trust each other, you've shared how you, you know, you love sailing and, and mm. traveled the world. What kind of music do you listen to? What is your favorite go-to music, for example? Do you listen to music while sailing? Or is it, uh, you know, just the sound of the wind and the sails and the, or wind? is music a part of your life we know reading and writing is music? <laughs> music is the heartbeat of life and i've got everything on my um on my phone from los Rochitos. and you know, i apologize if i've uh, pronounced that incorrectly i've got uh funky house music i've got disco rock music i've got arabic music rap music jungle um cheeky house music uh, sorry cheeky jazz music i've got classical for when i'm reading and writing um there i don't think i've got shamanic music on there 
Um, I've got my samba and my salsa and my merengue and my pasta oh, doble. Yeah, well, it makes sense as a global, as a globe trotter as you are, that you'd be, as you yeah. like say, either sailing or dancing. So, um, <laughs> it's a great it. playlist. It's, I can be in everywhere around the world in like five hours. It's great. I love it. That's cool. Well, I can't thank you enough for spending an hour with us, and we really appreciate yeah, thank that. You so Look much. forward. Look forward to collaborating with you. Who knows how? In Likewise. The future. One of the yeah, I have been stalking you. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> well, Don, again, thank you very much. I'm going to pause the recording. Again, folks, like, subscribe, and share. Thank you very much. Thanks for listening to another episode of Marketing Booth Solutions Podcast with your hosts, Captain Marco Torres. Now it's on you. Take the next step now. Go to marketingboothsolutions.com for more on how you can wow, delight, and surprise your clients with the most amazing draw card on the planet. So stay thirsty, my friends. Stay thirsty for knowledge. See you next time.